Today I'm going to uh, make a rear fender for FF008. That's the car I'm building here. And um, what I'm going to do is show you how to lay out a paper template. When you lay the paper over your panel area, your butt to be shaped, I usually start with what I can visualize as the flattest edge. So in, in, with that idea, I, I can't really take the paper and, and lay it on like this with, with this edge right here because that's where I have the most radius. So I want to take this flat edge and put it where I kind of have a nice flat spot to start with, okay? And that's going to be right over here. So that gives us the initial shape that's going to be taking place here, right through here. Now all of this, remember in, in shaping metal, we're either stretching or we're shrinking. So with what I'm going to be showing you here, with this paper, it's going to be all shrinking. So you can't really stretch paper or we'll tear it, okay? But by shrinking this paper down, slicing it up and bringing it together, it lets us know what needs to take place. We can then decide with the tools that we have, are we going to stretch by hammering or wheeling, or are we going to shrink by putting it on uh, the tree stump, dishing it into the, hammering it into the shrinking dish, and uh, tuck shrinking and whatnot, or my, my uh, reciprocating hammer, which I will choose over hammering over the tree stump any day because I've done enough hammering over the tree stump for now to last a lifetime. But uh, we'll, we'll decide which way we wanna go with achieving the finish that we want. So first thing we do is just try to lock this thing into place as best as we can. And there are, so we've got all this material out here. And just like with your metal, you don't want to have a bunch of extra material. When you're shaping, the more material you have out here, it just creates more and more of a wrestling match. So I'm going to take, and about halfway through this fender, I'm going to wrap it around, and then I can feel where my wheel arch is here, and I'm just going to trim this out. this, get rid of this extra paper. Um, this gives you a good visual of shrinking, why we have to shrink. All this material has to go somewhere. It's no different than the piece of metal that we've been using, okay? So it has to go somewhere. So what are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to kind of feel out where this panel, it, it has a slight arc right here, or a, a rise or a compound. So when I get to that peak is where I'm going to start slicing, and I'll drop it into place here. I'm just slicing about every three inches to start with. Okay, now we see how that starts to lay down. So this is where it gets tricky without having a, a ribbed buck to use because you start to fight uh, not having much behind it. But I, you know, I have a pretty good idea of what's happening here. So I'm going to try to lock this together just with some tape. There. Right through here. And the more precise you can get things, the better your finish is going to be. At the same time, the more you learn how to shape and make mental notes of how the panel should be, you can write, you know, on your template here. Now what's interesting down here, we've got this big uh, part where it really sucks in. 
And that's going to take a lot of shrinking, depending on how we choose to turn this into a metal. There's a couple of different ways we can do it. To get this onto metal. Now, there. That's pretty close. This is going to need to get shrunk in, so I can mentally make a note of that, and I'll remember it, that i got to get that shrunk more down here. But it's easier to, you know, we, as you're shaping, come back and forth, check fitment, go back to the machines, come back, check fitment, and just ease your way into it. Now, with the machines that I have, a reciprocating hammer and an English wheel, my tree stump with uh, dishing uh, and shrink, shrinking dishes, and then my leather shot bag, I have to decide how to make this with the tools that I have. And I like to um, cut this into two pieces. So my seam, I always try to put my seams at the sharpest point of the panel, the sharpest radius, which is gonna be right through here. Okay, so that tells me the two pieces I need to transfer over to my sheet aluminum and what they're going to look like. You really want to try to get these held together as po best as possible. So this tape, if it lets loose and I'm over there trying to lay out my templates, then I lose my whole panel um, or I lose my, my whole template. It makes it very difficult. So what I'm going to do is add some tape through the center here if I can without messing it up. So by cutting that, it's going to get rid of this extra spring, which is a similar behavior that would take place with metal. It's going to want to be sprung like that. Now my metal is going to overlap from piece to piece, so you've got a little bit of, of uh, forgiveness there and uh, wiggle room, I guess. To work under with your overlap. I'm going to envision this edge as the flat edge that we started with over there. And all of this, the material out here, to be shrunk. Okay, now we're starting to take shape. Oh, and there it, it broke loose. It didn't like that. Okay, so I'm going to put that back together. But this gives me a real good idea of what I'm going to have to have to work with. So, and I'm going to leave myself uh, a couple inches of extra overhang here. So I'm just going to give this a nice, a big outline. Okay, so we know it's going to be about like that. And about like that. And that gives me plenty to work with. So here's what we have. Now looking at this, I know that I'm gonna be hammering a little bit through this waist, this midsection, kind of a waistline here. I wanna give that a little bit of lift, so I'll hammer it over the shot bag. And then I'm gonna be shrinking through here to bring that down into the wheel art. Let's go over to the car and, and we'll uh, show you how it fits. So here's what we had, and as I said on my video the other day, I always try to start shaping by hand first. So when I look at this, I, I ask myself, which shapes can I achieve without using any tools? And that's going to be this arc here. Um, the idea is to get this panel to touch in as many places as possible without going into your compound curves. That's the best place to start. If I wanted to get this radius here right now, the only place it's gonna to touch is one small section, right? I can't get that radius yet. It doesn't make sense to, to try. You're basically choosing a battle when you're doing this and you wanna, I would say, choose the path of least resistance but that resistance is what builds character and what bu builds skill. So you have, to, uh, you have to learn to make it a dance. You know, the things that are difficult instead of a wrestling match. You have to make it beautiful. So right now, 
And looking at this, we don't, we don't want to go that way because then we have all this material here and all this material here that's going to have to be brought in. If we go this way, we know what needs to be shrunk and it's all through here, right? So that's what we're going to do. We'll just go ahead and put it on your homemade bender here, radius break, whatever you want to call it, your knee. Just kind of start to bring it into shape. Now in your mind, as you're doing this, you know, you want to have a, a visual of where this panel is going to end up. So you, you can kind of have a mental guide as you're bending where you want it to lay so you don't bend it too far. And, you know, it's better to work into it than to try to work backwards. I'm focusing my bend right on this area here because that's the area I want to make contact. And the goal is for the whole thing to make contact without having any clamps. That's, that's what I've seen when I'm looking at other people's work and, and my own work. I think that's a sign of somebody who's really getting it is when your panel can just lay on the car and you don't have a bunch of clamps holding it on. Now, there are obviously places that you just have to, you have to pin your metal down and clamp it down and uh, you want it to, to fit properly. And to do so, you've got to use some type of fastener. Right through the middle has got to get hammered up a little bit. And we're seeing that now because the panel is, it's touching out here. Okay, we're touching out on this outer parameter and then when it touches in the, on the center bar here, it's lifted, it's kind of taken off this way. That's why we know we want to get that, that uh, crown on it coming up and out. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is just give a light hammering through this center section to bring that out and then it'll drop back down a little bit and then we'll shrink all this in. That's a lot of material to shrink. Um, I probably will end up trimming a lot of this off. So this is a bossing mallet and I always check my tools before I start using them on the aluminum. The cleaner your tools are, the cleaner your finish is going to be. So this side has some indentation in it. Somebody is using it to pound, uh, looks like a weld, a raw weld that hadn't been finished yet. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and smooth my mallet out because those little divots will show up in my material, in my aluminum. starting to take place here. Still tight here. It's almost like a little reverse that's coming up. We're just going to wheel that out and then we'll shrink all this out here. Again, that's a lot of material we're going to be moving on the outside, but it'll all come together here. Always check my wheels to make sure they're clean. I just polished these the other day. Usually polish them about three times a year maybe. And then try to keep them covered um, because they like to rust. And all that shows up in your aluminum. People ask me how long it takes to polish one of these cars. Well, there is some polishing involved, but if you keep your tools clean as you'll see when we make this panel, um, there's very little work, finishing work, that needs to be done other than dressing your welds. So first, I'm just gonna make some passes to start smoothing out my um, 
hammering. And the reason I hammered was just to give it, it's kind of like a jump start for your crown. Wheeling will do the same thing uh, in a much more consistent manner than hammering. But the hammering is, is you know, you're putting pretty good blows into it with every, every time you hit the hammer. And so you can get a lot more shape a lot quicker. All right. So let's see if we can catch that shape starting to come in. I don't want to really pay attention to what hap what's happening out here. I mean, you need to be aware of it. But really what we're looking at now is this first little reverse starting to take shape and this rise. We're going to just slowly work away at this panel from here on out. Then we'll come back through and we'll cover the rest of it. But I think it's really starting to take a really beautiful shape here. So we'll see how it fits on the car now. So you can see the radius is a little tighter than what we have here, but that's because of what I was just doing to it. I, you know, I've changed the, the uh, structure of the, the metal here. So it's going to want to tighten up and spring up on you. So you got to massage it back into shape because if I'm, if I allow this panel to tighten up on me as I'm working it and I don't pay attention to that. And if I go and start to shrink, uh, all this out here with it tight, I'm going to have a heck of a time getting it to fit. So you want to make sure it's, um, it's working with you throughout this whole process that you want to make sure that it's fitting and not over tightening because it'll get away from you. And then you'll, you, you can lose the panel real fast if that happens. Really good. It, it's touching all the way through here. There'll be no problem getting the rest of this. Now I can see where I've wheeled. So I'm going to look underneath and make a mental note or, or draw with a marker. If you need to do that of how much needs to be shrunk and to determine where to start shrinking, we're going to identify where this panel is touching and where it starts to lift off of my butt. I want to start shrinking that in. Now all this metal is going to get pushed together into itself. When a tailor is tailoring a suit, um, I think the most beautiful suits don't have a lot of, of um, pleats in them, of course, you know, because it's, you, you want that material fit to the body. It's just like a car. But the cool thing with metal is that instead of having pleats where a tailor would, would overlap material, okay, I'm just showing you on my shirt here, uh, even here, okay? The seamstress had to overlap this material to tighten up the cuff. Well, with the metal, we don't have to overlap. Now, I do that up here with some of my other panels because I like that aircraft look, but I'm not overlapping because of shrinking. I'm overlapping because of body sections, okay? We've got the tail, the center, like fuselage kind of, and then the nose. But here, where all this material, you know, uh, we overlapped the paper, right? Like a tailor would or a seamstress when they're making a garment. Here, the metal, we get to push into itself. So this, what is now 60 thousandths, is going to become maybe 70 thousandths by the time I'm done, shrinking this all in together. But what's so beautiful about metal is that it pushes into itself. You don't have any wrinkles or pleats or creases if you're doing it right. Now, the learning process, you're going to have all of that. And uh, you can't get angry at yourself because <laughs> it's a part of learning. But this is what I love about shaping aluminum. I've only worked with steel a couple of times, to be honest with you, but this uh, aluminum will just absorb itself. It'll get thicker. You'll change the molecular structure of it. And to me, it becomes a thing of beauty as it, it uh, basically is like a, a fine suit being fit to this skeleton here. That's what we'll do next. On the reciprocating hammer, we'll start shrinking this. Now, as far as the process of shrinking goes, I can look at this panel and I know that I'm not going to have to shrink much up here because I just want this to kind of lay over. And I could even start to lay this over right now if I wanted to. But this section through here, from here to here, all this has to really get shrunk in. And so we're going to um, 
I'll just make a couple of marks so I have a general idea to start with. When I'm shrinking, you want to do your deepest shrinks first. So I'm going to work up right up to this wheeling line and then work my way out with the shrinking. The shrinking dies to bring this material together. Now, before I start, I'm going to explain how shrinking actually works. Uh, this is what the bottom die looks like. This is a steel die. Just for the sake of showing you, I'm, I'm using it. These are not steel. They are a hardened plastic. I uh, rarely use steel on my aluminum because it just beats the tar out of it and scuffs it up and it leaves a lot more finishing work to be done. The plastic materials uh, leave a very, very small amount of any damage to the aluminum and it's nice. They also shape fast too, really. You'll see the, the speed at which they can get this stuff formed. But these are shrinking dies that are not a good profile at all, in my opinion. Um, but you get an idea of what it looks like here, okay? So you've got what's called a thumbnail die. And this sticks up. It's kind of a triangular shape to it. And as I feed the metal in, this way, hammering up and down, and it's going to make what we talked about earlier, almost a pleat or a tuck. It's gonna raise the metal up as it comes across this. So if this is your metal, it's coming up like this. Now when it comes back, everything comes together, all this shape comes together at a point, forcing the metal into itself. Now, when the metal's forced into itself, you have this much metal that's been raised and as it comes back it's being forced in it's going to shrink it get smaller well it has to go somewhere when it gets smaller right so it's going to curve over that's how you use shrinking to obtain a radius Let's see how it fits on the car now. So we're really close. And as I said, I've made a number of these. So surprised actually this one is just about dead on my first fitment. That doesn't always happen, but that's what you want to have happen. I just need to get this contour here. Bit. I just kind of put a quick bend in it just to get an idea where we were at.
And this, you know, this will get wheeled, first of all, in the English wheel. And then it'll get trimmed with this outside piece that's going to come in and, and meet up with it. But, so now I'm feathering in these, this uh, 12 and 24 wheeling I did earlier, kind of a flatter shape. And it's really giving some pronunciation to this slight reverse. Just, I think it gives the car a beautiful hip on the rear end. See the nice reverse in it coming in there. It's what we created right at the beginning. We hammered this out, wheeled it, got that reverse in, and now it's starting to take shape here. But it's really tight this way. So by putting my knee under this and bending it, it's gonna lengthen it. Like I said, this is going to slide over a little bit, which it did. It needs to get wrapped in more. So to bring that around down at the bottom here, I'm going to shrink through this and get it to wrap under. But it is so close. It's really it's going to be sweet. And this started to, to come in where I wanted it to be as well. Let's grab this. What I'm looking for is I, I want my panel to be as close to the buck as possible. And for a general uh, roughing in of the panel, you know, this is shaping out real nicely down here. And uh, you can see up in here, here's my, my guide tube. And it's nearly touching the whole way through. I mean, I, there's minor adjustments you can do, you know, just pushing and pulling that, uh, won't equate to making major changes in the panel. So now if we look down here, we can see where it's lifting off. It's starting to pull away from the panel and we're about uh, an inch and a half, two inches away at the bottom. So that is going to require shrinking. So now we'll go back over to the hammer and we'll shrink that. So after uh, going back over to the shrinker and doing some more adjustments, you can see my gaps are now uh, pretty much dead on, touching everywhere I want to be up against that buck. Uh, again, this panel's a little sprung here, but you can see it bumps in nicely there, holds the contour all the way through. We're touching down here. Um, this is touching all the way through here. So now the next step is to fill in this outer portion. The reason that, uh, you know, as we discussed early on in this, that I couldn't shape this whole section is um, with my shrinker, it would put so much contour, this kind of flattens out out here, and it would put so much contour, rounded shape into this that it would, it would really look funny, it would start to dip in. So that's why I have to put a slice down the, the sharper part of the radius here and then um, just seam my panel right there by butt welding it. So that's what we'll do next. So we're just going to use my fingernail. I did show this on my other 
fender shaping video. This is going to be very similar to that. I can see here, this is pretty much flat. This is pretty flat, but right up in here, we've got this curve that needs to take place. So then the question, as we said before, is do we shrink or do we stretch? I've got a lot of extra material here. I'm just gonna identify the flat. Kind of make an identification here. And then when I go to shape this and bring it back over, I'm going to slide it under and see how it fits that way. And then I'll lay it on top and see how it fits that way. Primarily, I think my, my fit is going to be based on how it slips underneath. And that's where I'll make a score on this and then cut it to fit this. Allow me to put it, and I think we've we've got something we can work with here. Looks like it's gonna work out just fine. So now we'll take the all, scratch all, pick whatever you want to call it. We're going to make sure we have really nice, tight contact here. We're going to score the panel. see that on the video. The finer the line that we can create, the cleaner the seam when we go to butt weld. And then I have to come back and do another in most cases. It looks like this is going to sit about like that. All right, so I just got my first tack on here. Uh, you can see I have been having some real problems with my, um, my welder, and I think it may be the gas, my argon. I think, I don't know if there's some contamination in the tank. Obviously, you can see the difference I, uh, in the welds here. This was five minutes ago, and this was two minutes ago. I switched over to all new components in my torch. That seemed to help, but uh, you're gonna be along for the ride on this one because I've really gotta clean this up because this is gonna be noticeable on the, uh, on the finish. So let's see what happens here. Get that one right there. I'm gonna just use the bar from the tube buck behind here 
to kind of uh, lock this in. If I can get up to it. There, I got it. There we go. Just laid a couple beads on that one. Easy to get carried away because it's starting to weld so nicely, you just want to keep going. panel's fitting very nicely now and uh, what I do now um, I showed this on another video as well but uh, my penetration is pretty good in this well but what I like to do is flip the panel over and just take my torch and uh, go along this entire well this seam and pull the weld through so it has a consistent uh, penetration and then I'll come back and I'll file by hand the uh, top of the weld here. I'll knock it down. I'll use a grinder on the back side to smooth it. What that looks like. So there you can see uh, kind of that globby spot. You can see just a real light penetration from my initial welds. Uh, clearly. I want the penetration to be better than that, um, but there's a compromise here. I, I could get a deeper penetration on my weld, but it would also heat up the panel to an extent where it could start to warp it. So the weld that I, I initially start with on the other side um, is just enough to, to get uh, through um, and then leave me with a, a nice setup to come around the back side and give this final um, weld here. And that really pulls that weld through for a nice penetration, gives you a solid panel. This is where you can see the, the benefits of having your weld on a high crown point. Um, really lets you just work a tight area here without affecting your other... like about filing is that um, it doesn't put all the dust into the air so I mean when you're hand filing like this you don't need to wear a, a mask per se because your shavings are just falling right to the floor whereas if I'm using power tools puts dust into the air gets dust all over my panels my components here and this is a maybe a little more work but to me, it's worth it for that reason. I All right, so I have the weld knocked down and it's uh, nice and consistent for the uh, transition from one panel to the other. And now we're gonna go ahead and just uh, give it a wheeling through. I like to make sure all the dust and any debris is off before I start wheeling because it will end up getting into your metal. And then it just gives you one more thing you have to try to take care of later.
So as I'm wheeling, I can really feel you know, the highs and lows. You kind of want to pay attention to those. If you hit something that's just, you can tell it's really a different variation of thickness. Uh, you kind of got to choose what you're going to squash down and, and go back and sand out or, uh, or file out. So far this feels pretty good. There's one little spot I hit that was a little thicker. Just kind of tighten my wheel up here with my knee as I'm going around. Alright, and that pretty much does it there for our shape. We'll go ahead and finish dressing that weld and, and uh, really blend it. Um, this panel right here isn't, isn't locked down, but it will come right in where it needs to be when we bring those two together. That should uh, give you a pretty good idea of how that shape comes in. and my approach to moving metal.